Hey everyone, welcome to GoToGaming. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to set up an ARC server on the Windows Store version for PC, and also how to access legacy servers for your own personal raid practice without the need for a Nitrato server. This setup works out almost like a mini cluster, allowing for minimal transfers while running one map at a time. For this example, I will be setting up the server on my PC and accessing it with my Xbox. This method does require two accounts and two copies of the game, but will also work with the game share abilities through Xbox Live. Alright, let's get into this. If you're anything like me, you may use the same Microsoft account on your PC and your Xbox. If this is the case, and you are using game share for this setup, you can skip to the game share chapter. Alternatively, if you do currently use the same profile, but want to continue using it on Xbox, you will need to take a couple extra steps and purchase a second copy of the game to make this work properly. If you already have a separate Microsoft or Xbox account that you use on your PC, you can skip ahead to the Install Arc section. If not, head on over to Xbox.com and set yourself up a new account. I've provided a link in the description down below for you. Once you have the second account, hit the Start button and highlight your profile pic and username. Click on this, then click Change Account Settings. Now click Family and Other Users, and click on Add Someone Else to This PC. If you do not want to buy a second copy, and you are okay with using an alt as your main playing account for ARC, you can take advantage of the Xbox Game Share feature. But if you're using Game Share already with one of your friends, or you have no problem picking up a second copy of ARC, you can skip to the Install ARC section. If you are going to make use of the game share abilities, a couple more steps are needed. Make sure you are signed into your Xbox with your main account that has both the game and Xbox Live. Pull up the menu and head over to Settings, General, and then Personalization. Once the Personalization menu pops up, set this Xbox as your home Xbox. This will allow any account, including the one you just set up, to have access to all of your games and Xbox Live while signed into this Xbox. Next, you will have to add the new profile to your Xbox by heading back into the menu, highlighting your profile, and selecting Add or Switch. Once signed into the new profile on your Xbox, be sure to see Active Profile and load up Arc to ensure everything is working properly. Last step in the game share process is to make sure you're signed into your PC with your main Xbox account that has ownership of Arc. Okay, at this point we should all have two accounts set up. If you haven't done so already, make sure your Xbox Live friends with your new account. It will make things run much smoother from here. If you want the game share route, you should be signed into your PC with your main account and will be able to go directly into the Windows Store and install Arc and whichever DLCs you own. If you are using your second account on your PC, there are two ways for you to purchase a second copy of the game. Either fully set up your new account with all of your financial info, or just gift it from your main account so you don't have to set up any info or anything else in the new account. If you gift it, a code that you can redeem in the Microsoft Store will be sent to the new account upon completion of your purchase. Keep in mind, if you want to play any of the paid DLCs, both accounts will need to have ownership of the DLC. Once the codes have been sent, make sure you're assigned into your PC on the second account and open up the Xbox app to retrieve them and use them in the Microsoft Store to start the install of Arc. Alright, now that Arc is installed on your PC, things work pretty much the same no matter the account configuration that you have decided to go with. In order to set the files up and make things easier, open up Arc on your PC and select Host Local. Here you can take your time to set up all of the settings that you would like, but these can be changed at any time, and I will show you how to access the INI settings to give you greater control over them later on in the tutorial. Click on one of the maps you intend on using in your mini cluster, and then run dedicated server. Once the server loads up to the admin menu, give it a second to settle, then click return to main menu. This will save your server and create the file paths that we will need. If you would like, you can continue this step for each of the maps you want to use in order to create the directories and have them all ready. If not, you can create them as you need them. Alright, now that we have our file path set up, I will show you how to access the game INI and save directories. Open up File Explorer and navigate to C Users and open up your profile. If you haven't done so already, enable the option to show the hidden files by clicking on File, Change Folder and Search Options. Click View 
and under Hidden Files and Folders, click the Show Hidden Files, Folders and Drives option. Hit Apply, then OK. Now that the rest of your files are showing, double click App Data, then Local, Packages, and scroll down until you see Studio Wildcard 4584, etc, etc. For me, it was the second one down. Double click, then Local State, Saved, UWP Config, and finally UWP. Within this directory, you will find the Game INI and Game User Settings INI for your locally hosted server. Open both of them and you will find a wide range of different settings for you to mess around with. If there is enough demand, I can make another video going into greater detail about what each setting does, so let me know down in the comments if this is something you would like to see. For now I want to focus on the restrictions that we will run into with this setup. With the Steam version and when setting up a Nitrato server, the two INIs previously mentioned would allow you to add in certain mods and command lines that offer many changes to the ARC experience. However, the Windows version doesn't support 99% of these commands, and the only line I've been able to enter successfully has been to override the official difficulty settings in the Game User Settings INI, which will control the max level of the dinos. If you would like to adjust the dinos to have a max wild level of 300, scroll down until you see Server Settings. The next line should be Difficulty Offset. Right below this, enter Override Official Difficulty equals 10. If you would like to experiment with this a little, the calculation used to determine what the override should be is max wild level divided by 30. Just remember to do a dino wipe after adjusting this value to repopulate the dinos into the new max level range. Also, in the game INI, scroll down until you see hard limit turrets and range equals true, and change this to say false. Most, if not all of these saves are from before the turret limit was imposed, and if this setting is left as is, most turrets will be turned off for being over limit. Alright, that's the main part of your server setup. Now for the fun part, adding in a legacy server and making this a mini cluster. Go back a couple folders in Explorer until you reach saved. In this directory, head into maps. Here you will find all of the file paths and save files that we set up earlier by hosting the maps as a dedicated server. Minimize File Explorer and head to the link provided below to download the available legacy server files directly from Wildcard. On this page, you will find three hover menus. We will be focusing on the depreciated legacy server list, which is the middle option. Hover here to find a massive list of potential servers for you to explore. This is a bit of a trial and error process, as some of these servers seem to be a different file system and crash when trying to load. Luckily, these servers are fairly easy to spot by looking at their files once you have downloaded them. Zip files containing arc log files are the ones we are on the lookout for. On rare occasions, the server file will have a zip file within the same directory as the arc log files. You can extract these files to find the original legacy saves. I will be completely honest though, of all of the arc log servers I have checked, I have only found one so far that has this hidden zip file, and that's Ragnarok 9. Once you have chosen a few potential servers to try, open up the zip files and locate the actual map save file, which will look like one of the files listed on screen now. This is the only file you actually need in order to load up the legacy servers on your own. Once found, head back to your file explorer and drag and drop it into the relevant file path for the appropriate map. If you don't see the file path, you may need to repeat the steps earlier in the video to set up the files by hosting a server quickly on the map you have chosen. You may need to access these files often, so I suggest creating a shortcut to the saved folder somewhere like your desktop for convenient access. Alright, that's pretty much it. Now that the save has been placed in the proper location, load up ARC and go back in and select the map you chose for a legacy and click Run Dedicated Server. Set the server and admin passwords to something you will remember, and can type easily with a controller. If the game loads all the way into the admin screen, congrats, it should be working. If the game crashes while loading, try once more, but if the crash persists, try a different legacy save until you can get one to load. Alright, now to see if we picked a good server. Head back to your Xbox, load up ARC, and find your PC profile in your friends list and hit join game. This should automatically start loading you into the legacy server. Once the game loads and you have created your character, 
Enter into creative mode by hitting start, then hit LB, RB, X, and Y all at once to pull up the admin menu. Enter the admin password you set earlier on your PC, then type cheat GCM. This will allow you to quickly fly around the map and scout out whether or not it has any bases built on it for you to have fun with. Also, if you enter cheat leave me alone, you can scout the maps without draining any turrets. You may have to load up a few to find one that was decently populated, but I never had to dig too far to find one. Alright, that's the legacy server part out of the way. Now I will tell you how you can make this a private mini cluster for you and your friends. Make sure in your settings on PC, you have the ability to up and download items. Then on Xbox, when you are playing on a map and want to switch to a different one, upload whatever items you want to take with you to an obelisk or tech transmitter, then exit the game. I like to send myself a fob, some equipment and tools, as well as a couple cryos to make my life a little easier. Only the items you upload will be accessible on the other map, as you are not actually transferring your character. Back on your PC, click the button to return to the main menu which will save the game, then close Arc. Head back into File Explorer and navigate to the directory of the map you are coming from, and copy all files except the map save file. Back out until you see the directory for the map you want to head to, and paste all of these files beside that map save file. You now have all of your character and tribe data on both maps. Now load Arc back up and host a dedicated server on the new map. Once the admin menu pops up, join back with your Xbox profile and it should give you the option to spawn somewhere or make a new character. Spawn in somewhere close to an obelisk or other sources of downloading items like a city terminal and download all of your items. When you're ready to head back to the other map, upload what you want to take with you and exit the game on Xbox. Then on PC, return to the main menu to save, but this time you don't necessarily have to close Arc, you can just load back into the other map and download your items. The only time you will need to copy files again is if while on the other map you gain enough XP to level up or have beat one of the ascension bosses. In this case, again on PC head back to the main menu to save, then close Arc. Head to File Explorer and navigate to the map you are coming from and find your character files. You will not need to copy the tribe files again, just the character files. Once you have copied your character files, head to the directory for the map you are heading to and overwrite the character files here. Now load Arc back up and head into the destination map, and you will be able to continue on leveling up. This will work with all of your friends who join as well, just make sure everyone uploads their items and are ready to go at the same time. Then go in and copy all files over at once. Remember though, the only time you copy tribe files is the first time going onto a new map. Never overwrite them. If you overwrite tribe files, you run the risk of losing ownership of your tribe and dinos, and will have to use admin commands to regain control of them. All right. It was a long and somewhat complicated process, but we finally made it to the end. If you've run into any issues with the setup and have questions, I encourage you to ask down in the comments below and I will do my best to help you get things sorted out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found the info helpful, hit the like button to help spread it to others. If you find any good legacy servers that load up with cool bases to check out, let me know down in the comments. I may have to check them out myself. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to keep up to date with all my latest videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be the first to see them. And until next time, keep gaming.